The story of Henry Lawson is well known, and many anthologies on his life and work have covered most aspects of his complicated journey. His loves and relationships throughout his life illuminate in many ways the choices as well as his self-destructive tendencies which in the end almost certainly shortened his life. His sexuality at the very least could be described as fluid. Frank Morehouse in his book The Drover's Wife and based on one of Lawson's most celebrated short stories quotes Lawson himself when he says in his poem Wonderlight found in his diary in 1905 when he was only 35, quote, For my ways are strange ways, and new ways, and old ways, and deep ways, and steep ways, and high ways, and low ways. I am at home and at ease, on a track that I know not, and restless and lost on a road that I know. His emotionally conflicted personality and the morally repressed times in which he lived was played out through the mateships and, in particular, with Jim Gordon, who he met when he was 25 and Jim 17 in Burke in western New South Wales, and the women in his life, poet Mary Gilmore, his mentally unstable wife, Bertha, and the last 20 years of his life, Isabel Byers. As if in parenthesis, his early period with Jim Gordon was reenacted in their last decade, of his life after a 25 year gap, during which a sporadic exchange of letters was the only correspondence. Frank Morehouse, when researching his book, said, quote, the biggest surprise was Lawson's effeminacy or femininity, unquote. One of Lawson's aunts said, quote, Henry should have been born a girl, unquote. And in his diaries, Lawson himself identifies his own effeminacy. The word itself, relating as it does to men, has a pejorative and negative meaning in Australian culture. In an age when attraction between men or between women was not only seen as morally reprehensible but illegal, Lawson, like others, never acknowledged any mateship as anything other than platonic. Manning Clark was unequivocal and perhaps overstates mateship as a form of sublimated homosexuality. Lawson renewed his relationship with Jim and, as an older man, was able to be slightly less secretive when he writes, quote, We met in Burke some 25 years ago and thus we share two pasts, so to speak. But we were very young men then and those pasts are boys' pasts. But being remated, we haven't got to speak of those pasts. There's a certain shyness about the matter, if you understand which may or may not deepen as these 25-year pasts are cleared up." Unquote. While in Burke, they had a studio photograph taken of them both by Charles Wilson. Jim Gordon described his friend as a long-necked, flat-chested stripling eyeing me off, who had the most beautiful and remarkable eyes I had ever seen on a human being. Soft as velvet, and of a depth of brownness that is indescribable. He later wrote, quote, The stars have never seemed so bright since Lawson walked with me. Unquote. Lawson's beloved daughter Bertha, or Barta, as he called her, said in her recollections of those times, Dad loved Jim very much, and Jim loved him. Dad said, After all, I think he's the best thing I ever did. The Black Snake Skin and Book, with names of the members of its arcane fellowship found in the State Library, Realia, includes the name Henry Lawson. In a letter written to her father, Barter, now a young woman, writes, Father, I heard of your recent unfortunate circumstances and the palace conditions you now live in. Percy Lindsay says he sees you often near your digs in North Sydney and was quite concerned that your incorrigible generosity has left you in an impecunity of your own making. I implore you, dear father, to accept the generosity of people who adore you and your inscrutable talents. There are many who will take a crown that was generously given to you only a moment previous and spend it on liquor and tobacco. 
Your recent term in the debtor's prison would have been an intolerable imposition and a cruel denial of your ability to write, which is a vital necessity for you. I received a letter from Jack Moses who enclosed five pounds to be passed on to you. He says that he hopes this amount will clear your current debts and avoid a similar outcome regarding future detention in the Darlinghurst cells which you know well. He says he and his fellow members at the Black Snake Club all donated a small sum and hope to see you back at their regular meetings soon. My mother has remained unaware of your association with these fellows and recently found her own photographic image disassembled from the original studio portrait taken of us three in 1906. It would seem it had been cut from the portrait with a knife, which was an upsetting spectacle for myself and my mother to see. Dear, dear father, you've never failed in your loving care for me and have shown an uncommon sensitivity towards me and within the rare embrace of a feminine knowledge and understanding of my emotions and disposition. I implore you to accept the generosity from your friends and return to your vocation, which was always your mission in this life, and be vigilant and cautious when attending these clandestine gatherings. Yours, Bertha.